The Eagles were one of the best all-around teams this season. And when I say all-around, I mean all-around. Ranking top five in both offense and defense, and having what many call the best offensive line in football, and one of the brighter young coaches. I mean, this Eagles team was truly clicking in all three phases since week one. The Eagles finished this season setting a franchise record with the most wins in a season with 14 as they finished up 14 and three. What made this offense so dangerous this year is that they had a variety of ways to beat you. One being their dominant run game. The Eagles backbone is their run game. And if you count Jalen Hurts, the Eagles always have two and sometimes even three backs in the backfield at one time. This constant stress was a killer for defenses and the Eagles had 32 rushing touchdowns this year which led the NFL and they also rushed for 147 yards per game, which was also good enough to lead the NFL. The Eagles rushed for over 100 yards in 12 out of their 17 games this season. And with Miles Sanders leading the charge with 259 rush attempts, 1,269 yards, which was good enough for fifth in the NFL and 11 touchdowns, you could see the success the Eagles were having in the run game. And although Miles Sanders was the star of the backfield, he wasn't alone. Kenneth Gainwell added another 53 rushing attempts for 240 yards and 4 touchdowns. Boston Scott added another 54 rushing attempts with 217 yards and 3 touchdowns. And just when you thought you already had enough to worry about, the Eagles start pulling out RPOs and design runs, letting their dual threat quarterback Jalen Hurts get into open space. He added another 165 rushing attempts, 760 yards and 13 touchdowns. Behind their dominant offensive line, the Eagles were able to take advantage of teams in the trenches breaking big runs, wearing teams down with long physical drives, and sometimes even having plays where runners are going untouched. But as I said earlier, the Eagles were one of the most complete teams in the NFL. So I won't spend too much time talking about this defense, but they need to be talked about. Because as they say, offense wins games, but defense wins championships. Oops. Well, not in this case. But seriously, nonetheless, this Eagles defense was amazing all season. Coming in at the second defense in the NFL, the Eagles gave up just over 300 yards per game, and that was only behind the San Francisco 49ers. The Eagles defense finished second all-time in most sacks in the season with 70, and they proceeded to keep that dominant streak going, adding another eight sacks in three postseason games. One of them being the biggest and most defying play of any game this season, and that's the sack Lewis Reddick got on Brock Purdy on the 49ers' first drive of the NFC Championship game. Injuring Brock Purdy and forcing an early turnover giving the Eagles all the momentum that they needed. Now there's been a long-lived debate about if you'd rather have a dominant front four or have amazing DBs on the back end and which are more important to a defensive success. Well, the Eagles ended that debate and they just had both. Because this defense also came away with 17 interceptions, which was tied for fourth this season. Now, I won't talk about the defense too much because people only care about offense and points, but drop in the comments if you want a Philadelphia Eagles defense a breakdown in a later video. Now, no matter how good the defense was, the name of the game is playing complimentary football, and that's trusting that when you get a turnover, your offense will march down the field and punch it in. The Eagles and Jalen Hurts took a massive jump in the passing game this season, and that's largely due to the addition of A.J. Brown. But Jalen Hurts himself made huge strides throwing the ball. Finishing up this season completing 306 out of 460 pass attempts, which was a career-best 66% completion rate, and throwing for 3,700 yards in only 15 games and 22 touchdowns, all of which were career-best, while also cracking the top 10 in passing yards this season. Jalen Hurts made 17 money throws this season and had a 42% completion rate on deep balls. Now, money throws are the type of throws that if they weren't thrown with precision, they could be incompletions or much worse, interceptions. So here, let's take a look at two of them. Now, when you watch this, this was really a great catch by AJ Brown, but you can't help but notice the placement of the ball. In one-on-one -on -one coverage, the quarterback's job is to give the receiver a chance. There are no guarantees, A.J. Brown is smothered down the field and Jalen Hurts just puts the ball right in the bread basket. And then this throw here is very impressive considering the fact that just a couple seasons ago, people were questioning Jalen Hurts' throwing ability. And now he's making back shoulder throws for 30-yard touchdowns like we see all the time from the greats. Combining Jalen Hurts' running ability, which he's always had, and now with him getting more comfortable in the pocket and trusting his arm, Jalen Hurts is a nightmare for defenders. Jalen Hurts against top 10 defenses this year ran for 85 yards and one touchdown and was 73 for 114 for 955 yards and 11 touchdowns. 
with only one interception. Jalen Hurts has also become the only player in NFL history with 3,000 passing yards, 700 plus rushing yards, 20 plus touchdowns, and 10 plus rushing touchdowns, all with fewer than 10 interceptions. Yeah, needless to say, he had an amazing year. But the final piece to this already beautifully put together puzzle was pairing your up and coming quarterback with a solidified number one option at the receiver spot. And that's exactly what they did when they traded for AJ Brown. And all AJ Brown did was come in and set the single season receiving record for the Philadelphia Eagles. AJ Brown had 88 receptions for 1,496 yards and 11 touchdowns, putting together his best season as a pro yet. AJ Brown made an instant splash in his debut for the Philadelphia Eagles where he had 13 receptions for 155 yards and we were immediately able to see the impact he would have on Jalen Hurts but also the pressure it took off of Devontae Smith's shoulders. Devontae Smith this season finished with 95 receptions, 1196 yards and 7 touchdowns. Their presence alone opened up so much in the run game and with these two dynamic receivers lining up on opposite sides of each other plus the supporting cast of guys like Dallas Goddard and Quez Watkins, you can see why this offense quickly became one of the more feared offenses in the league. AJ Brown and Devontae Smith only had four games all season where they didn't combine for at least 100 receiving yards, and those were in weeks 9 through 12, and the other game came in the last game of the season when the Eagles pulled their starters early. Together, they were targeted on more than half of Jalen Hurts' pass attempts, and with A.J. Brown coming in and helping the offense's air attack to be another problem that the defense has to account for, that only makes the next few years stressful for NFL defenses. All of the things the Eagles were able to accomplish and it was only their first year together. Drop in the comments if you think they'll come back even better next year. As always, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and check out my previous video on one of the best receivers in the NFL, Justin Jefferson. Peace.